Hey there, this is Jason with UBOT Studio. I wanted to introduce you to some of the new features of UBOT Studio 5, but before I did that, I want to go through a little refresher on the individual aspects of UBOT Studio itself, in case it's been a while since you've used it. We've done a lot since UBOT Studio 3.5, and we've done a lot since UBOT Studio 4, and the new UBOT Studio 5 has a different visual appearance as well as several new features, so I want to go through some of those and start at the beginning for anyone who has maybe taken a break from using UBOT Studio in a while. So, to begin, you'll notice that the browser window here on this kind of third or two thirds of UBOT Studio is just like a regular browser. You'll interact with it just like you would a normal browser, except that right clicking on different elements, dragging different elements into the script window here, or hitting record and interacting with the script or with the browser window creates script commands here in your script window. Otherwise, this functions more or less like you would see a regular browser, i.e. Firefox or Chrome function. So, once you've got a handle on how the browser window works, you'll see that the script window is where you build your individual scripts. Now, there are really only two things about the script window that you need to know. The first is that you can drop commands from either the browser or the uh, command window here onto your script window to build your script. And the second thing you need to know is that there are two views if you have the professional or developer edition of Viewbot Studio. The first view is called node view and it's what you see here where individual commands are separated by kind of uh, blocks that we call nodes and you can drop different commands inside of other commands and visually see how your script is built through this visual interface. Now if you click the code view button you will switch to a text-based view. What we call uh, the U script here is now individual commands that are written out and that can be edited just like you would edit Visual Studio or C++ or any other programming language. And the nice thing about the code view is that when you get to be building larger scripts, you can interact with them faster through this. You can also type commands in, edit commands, etc. So it's a lot simpler in a lot of ways once you start using UBOT Studio more heavily to use the code view and then to click node view to switch back if you want to do that. Over here on the far left you'll see the command window. You can hide this or bring it up by clicking this wrench icon. The commands are separated into groups that have grown over time. Some of the new groups that have uh, been added since UBOT Studio 4 include the FTP commands, the socket commands, the Windows commands, the database commands, and the email commands I think. Uh, so each of those are ways to interact with non-browser aspects of your PC. So if you want to connect to a mail server to download your email or parse it for URLs, you just drop a connect to mail server command. If you want to interact with a SQL database, you drop a connect to database command, choose the SQL database type, and then you can pull data or add data to the tables in that database. If you want to connect to an FTP, you drop the connect to FTP server command. If you want to interact with your Windows machine by sending keyboard events or mouse events directly to your PC, you can use these Windows commands. And if you want to connect to web pages directly through sockets instead of visually through the browser, let's say you want to connect without loading images and you'd like to speed up your script that way, you would drop a socket container command and drop any kind of commands inside of that to directly connect to those web pages without loading the browser window itself. So that's the kind of gist of these individual command groups here. The rest, like browser command, you would use to interact with the browser. Flow command are commands that you would be familiar with if you're uh, at all familiar with programming languages. 
you would see commands like loop, uh, if and then, define, etc. to help you create a flow for your scripts and your bots. File commands let you move files and folders and rename them on your Windows PC. Data commands let you interact with tables and lists that you've created. Settings commands let you do things like clear the cookies of your browser and change whether or not images will be loaded. And the UI commands were the UI commands were a previous version's uh, method to build your user interface, which we have uh, made somewhat out of date by adding a what you see is what you get UI designer in UBot Studio 5. And um, the parameters down here at the bottom of the command window are essentially used to return values for each of these commands. So commands complete an action, parameters return values. If you are working with a list, you would use the list that you've created down here. If you're working with a variable, you would use the variable down here. If you're connected to an email server and you want to pull data from those emails, you would use the email parameters here, like email total messages, which would give you the complete number of emails on that server, or email subject, which would give you the subject line of the email. So each of these returns a value uh, that often corresponds to one of these commands here, and each of these commands completes an action. So that's the command window of UBot Studio. The bot bank, you can see by clicking this world icon, will let you view and use community created scripts to do things like connect to uh, individual websites like Facebook if you want to grab login or create account commands that other people have created and drop them into your script. Now once you've built a script, uh, if you want to run that script, you'll click this run button. If you want to pause it or stop it while it's going, you would click the pause or stop button. If you click the step button, you'll move through the script one command at a time. And of course, if you click the start recording button, you will build a script by interacting with the browser. Now, one of the more useful features of UBot Studio that we've expanded on in UBot Studio 5 is the ability to compile your scripts into standalone executables that anyone can use. This lets you build an executable that you can sell or that you can give away to clients as a bonus, a way to generate or build a list, etc. To do this, you're going to create your script and go into the compilation window here from the file menu and simply type in the name of the executable that you'll want to create here and hit compile. If you have the developer license of UBOT Studio, you're going to see these two additional tabs. Uh, the installer tab is a new tab that will let you build a package installer so that you can not just compile your executable, but also build an installation file that can include uh, such things as a text file, images, HTML, a CSV file, and rather than creating that separately with a third-party product or just zipping it, you can create your compiled bot and then include these other items here and hit compile to create that installation package. Now, if you go into this developer options tab, if you have the developer license, you'll see a couple cool things. Uh, ways to customize the color of your user interface, ways to remove different aspects of this UI like the branding that would remove the Made in UBOT Studio brand so that no one can tell how you created this software if you want to pass it off as something that maybe you created in Visual Studio, etc. You can hide the run bar, that would be this bar here, you can hide the navigation bar, you can change the icon that your executable file has. So to build a compiled bot, you would simply click the compile option here, or after you do uh, the feature editing here, click compile there. In addition to the uh, new installer option, we've added a UI editor. This lets you use a what you see is what you get designer to create the user interface for your scripts. This is a really simple way to build unique 
and customizable scripts inside of your UBOT Studio compiled or uncompiled bots. So for example, if you wanted to ask your user to include the number of times they'd like to sc the script to run by typing it into a text box, you would go into your UI editor, you would drop in a text box icon or element, and you would drop in a label element. We're going to call this number of times to run. And we're going to make note of this ID here. Let's see, we'll call that run. That's going to be the name of the variable. Anything that the user puts into this text box will automatically be translated into the variable, which will be called run. Now, after we've done this, we've basically created a very simple UI here. And if we hit the OK button, it will generate that UI into the script for us. If I compile this bot, it's going to include this UI above the script when, or above the browser window. And if someone were to type in, let's say four, inside this text box, it would send that number to the variable, which is called run. That way, if I want to create like a loop command, and I want the script to run a certain number of times, I would use the variable run and get that data from this text box. In the past, we had users use things called UI commands. So to create a text box, they would drop a UI text box command into their script and build the user interface that way. No longer a much easier UI designer has been created to create not only prettier, but much easier to design user interfaces. The last feature of UBOP Studio 5 that I want to describe very quickly is the calendar or the scheduler. If you would like to schedule your scripts, either the entire script or individual aspects of the script to run at certain times, simply create a custom command using the define feature. We're going to call this something like scheduled to run. And anything that you put inside of this, let's say a navigate command, will run whenever someone uses the scheduled to run command. Now, if we would like to build this inside the calendar, we just go up to the UI, sorry, to the view option, we click scheduler, and anything that we put inside of that define command is going to be available when we click on a time and pull this drop down. The nice thing about this also is that you can repeat individual parts of the script by doing things like, let's say, run this every three days, and it automatically fills that in. Once you hit OK and hit Run on Schedule, as long as you leave this UBOT Studio window open, when the scheduled time frame comes, anything that's inside of this Scheduled to Run Define command will run at that time. You can also include the calendar option inside of your compiled bots so that anyone who downloads your executable file can also choose their own times for anything that you've created inside of a define to run. You could put your entire script inside of a define if you wanted to make your entire bot run at a certain time, or you could put individual aspects of it inside of a define. So think of the define as a way to build custom commands or to set up scheduled commands to run at any time. So the new features of UBOT Studio 5 that I've covered are the recording feature, the UI editor, the scheduler, some of these individual commands over here that are new. And uh, so those are the features of UBOT Studio 5. Uh, if you're interested in additional resources on how to use UBOT Studio, you'll want to go to ubotstudio.com slash resources. If you do that, you will see a variety of tutorials that are more in-depth than this one. There are about 12 hours or so of tutorials, so you should have no trouble getting your head really wrapped around the individual commands of UBOT Studio. There are also sample scripts uh, that you can download 
On this page, there is a forum called the UBOT Studio Underground that has something like 70,000 posts on it. So if you have questions, you can join that forum and ask our community there. We also have a support system that you can visit by going to support.ubotstudio.com. And lastly, we have a wiki. Uh, wiki.ubotstudio.com has a list of all of the commands as well as individual features of UBOT Studio that you can use to figure out how to create the scripts that you need to automate everything that you do online. Thanks so much and enjoy UBOT Studio 5.